Well, welcome back. You know, it is so fun seeing the photos of all the birds that you are sharing on the Growth Care page and also the That's So Minnesota page. Last week, we identified the top 11 species of winter birds that are found in Minnesota. And attracting them has largely, largely, of course, in the winter months and mainly this week with the cold weather and what you actually put in your feeders. Bird expert Sharon Steitler tells us which birds like which food. Okay, so now that we know what birds to look for across the state, a lot of folks are noticing birds right in their own backyard and would like them to come back. So if you've never done this before, what would you suggest as a first time birder to get some winter birds in your backyard? Get as much sunflower seed as you can afford. More birds will eat black oil sunflower seed than any other seed that's out there. You know, have patience if you're putting up a bird feeder for the first time. They may not come, they may come within 30 minutes or it may take 30 days. But those are the two biggest things. And when you're looking at seed, because you'll see mixes that say Midwest mix, winter mix, you want to see mostly black seeds. If it's mostly black, that means it's mostly sunflower. If it's mostly orange or mostly yellow, those are going to be seeds that are less desirable to cardinals, chickadees, and nuthatches. So sunflower is the way to go. And then if you're going to get a feeder, um, I know there's lots of different feeders and a lot of folks, you know, think this or that. Um, I just have a simple feeder that has gravity that has it come out. And then I have like a little suet feeder. And those two next to each other have been just a great little uh, experiment of getting a lot of different kinds of birds. Yeah, and different feeders work for different yards. You know, I know squirrels are an issue. Uh, in my yard, I have what's called a fly-through feeder. So it's a tray with a roof. And I have it on a pole that's 10 feet away from anything. And I have a baffle that's about five feet up because squirrels in general can't jump 10 feet uh, horizontally or five feet vertically. So if you can get that situation, then you can put anything out. Like I even put peanuts in my, my uh, feed mix because uh, the nut hatches love that. The other thing is suet is great. You can get it in cages. If you want the bigger woodpeckers, you want the suet cages that have a little tail prop on there. Or you can do what I did. I took an old log and I drilled some holes in it and I stuffed suet plugs in that. And oh, the woodpeckers love that one. That is by far my most popular suet feeder. That's such a good idea. And the reason you need that is because they actually lean on that, right? They yes. lean on that bottom part. Yes. If you, when you watch woodpeckers feed, that tail, those feathers are very stiff. And when they go up a tree, that is holding them up. And, and that's also what's kind of fun about nuthatches is nuthatches do the complete opposite and go down. And so, yes, woodpeckers are hiding food in your, in your bark. The nuthatches are coming down and going, oh, yay, look what I found, treats. <laughs> you know what? It's so true. I have had so many nut hatches, and, and this summer I saw my first nut hatch that I've seen in my backyard. And my, my dad and I were on the deck, and I said, Dad, what is that beautiful little caramely colored bird? And my dad goes, It's a nut hatch. And how you know it's because it eats upside down. Yeah. <laughs> and this winter, we, we've had an inundation of the smaller red breasted nut hatch, which I think is even cuter than the usual white breasted nut hatch. I actually have to admit, I'm very distracted because I have two red breasted nut hatches right outside my window right now. And they just have such bold eyes and they're so fast. And yeah, nut hatches are the best. All right. So you don't have to get a bunch of feeders. You don't have to have 15 or 20. I did hear that um, birds do go in cycles and they go around and they kind of know. So once they realize that you will have consistent feed, they will stop by, right? Yes, consistency is key. So if I know I'm going to be gone for a while, like I spent a couple weeks up at the cabin up in McGregor, I uh, chat with my neighbors and I say, hey, I have some bird seed. Would you mind just throwing some seed out? So that way I keep the activity regular, not because the birds need it, but because I want to keep make sure that I stay they still stop by and I see them. I also want to point out is that it is completely normal to have fluctuations in the amount of birds. Uh, I get a lot of questions this time of year like, oh my birds are gone. Did I do something wrong? Is it climate change? This happens at certain times of the year. It's seasonal movement. There's kind of a secondary migration that happens in February. So some of the birds that we've had have already started pushing north or some may have pushed further south, but I guarantee you in March you are going to be inundated with birds again. Them. So make sure they're somewhere where you can see them yes. out your, you know, kitchen window or somewhere where you yeah. hang out, the living room, maybe your office if you're officing from home. Okay, so now that we know what to look for and now that we know how to feed them, next week we'll talk about how they're beginning to nest already. So I'm looking forward to that. Thank you. My pleasure.